All right, so this is going to be the uh, spring replacement on a 93 Suzuki Carry. So the first step is, obviously, you're going to have to loosen lug nuts on your wheel. Well, it's right on the differential. So we're going to get under here and jack from the differential to lift the truck. Now, you're going to need two jacks to get this done, and you'll see why we're going to need a second one here in a little bit. So you got to take the wheel off. So now that we have the wheel off, we can show you what the second jack is going to be for. So after we loosen the spring and the strut in here, the second jack is going to come in on the bottom of the A-arm, and that's what's going to jack and compress the strut when we get the new spring in. So next, we're going to move up top to where the, to where the uh, top of the strut bolts in. And there's going to be a nut right inside here. You just have to remove this plastic clap with a little uh, screwdriver. Now have your one jack, your second jack, put a little bit of tension on the bottom of the hub, on the bottom of the A-frame. Now the socket that you're going to need is going to be a 19 millimeter socket to take this nut off here. And if this spins, what you can do is take some channel locks or some other method to hold this metal piece right here. It's keyed to the top of the strut, so that will keep the strut from rotating if you hold on to that. Save this nut as well as there's a washer in here that you need to save as well. Now that that's off, we can lower the second jack. Watch as we lower the second jack. That's going to lower the strut until we can get Get out of here. Take the top cap off, take the strut cover off, and take the old spring out. Now, this rubber grommet that's right here, you could leave it in, but that's going to limit your travel on your new spring. So, we're going to want to take this out as well. The new springs are from Harley Rose, they're the progressive 2020 spring. So we're going to take our new spring, put it in, make sure we line up where the bottom of the spring is with this notch so that way it sits flush on the strut. Another piece that you can omit is the plastic strut cover and the reason you're going to want to omit this is when you go to put the strut back in the hole, you need to hold the strut shaft and this is going to get in the way. So we're going to pull the shaft all the way back out. And we're going to take our cap here. And we're going to take this other metal washer that goes over the cap. And we're going to put this and line it back up to go back up into the cab of the truck. Now at this point, you're going to need to jack up your second jack again. Okay, so before the top of the strut comes through, what we're going to want to do is remove this metal bushing. And now, to make insertion of this later on easier, you want to take some Scotch-Brite and just clean off any of the gunk on the outside of it. And then to lubricate it in this rubber grommet, you can take some petroleum jelly, some KY jelly, whatever you've got laying around, some grease, Astro Glide, whatever you've got laying around. Lubricate it well so that it'll slip in and out of the rubber grommet. 
easily. So now, if you look through the hole here, you'll see the strut coming through right there. So this is where you need to jack the strut up and have the person jacking, have another person jack on the jack while you keep the strut aligned. So the bolt, you see the bolt comes through the hole perfectly right there. Now sometimes it's not centered on here, so what you need to do then is move, move this. You want it down some? Sometimes you need to jack it down a little bit to get it to move. Alright, line that up centered and then jack it back up again making sure that the strut rod comes through the hole because if the strut rod doesn't come through the hole then it'll just compress the strut on you all right that's through enough there all right once you have the strut through the hole and you can see there there's a flat spot that's going to index this metal bushing so you're going to get the flat spot lined up and push the metal bushing down in now it's important that this is centered because if it's not then this metal bushing will push on that strut and just push it back down in which case you're going to have to use the jack to lower the strut again and start over serrating again but in this case we have it centered well enough we have enough threads through there that we're going to be able to tighten this down sometimes you might only have enough threads to be able to get the nut on without the washer. So what we're gonna do, I like to put the nut in the socket to start it so it's not cross-threaded. You start the nut without the lock washer on it. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna use this to tighten it down and pull the strut rod up from below. Okay, that should be enough threads that have pulled through. So we're going to loosen the nut back off. And now we have plenty of exposed thread. Now we can put our washer back on no problem. And I like to add just a little bit of blue Loctite in here so this nut doesn't come back off. So we're going to add just a little bit of blue Loctite inside the nut. Now we're going to screw this back on. Real. Again, using the socket to keep the nut from cross-threading as we thread it on. Now when you tighten, at some point, again, you're going to get to where this metal bushing is going to want to spin on you. And that's okay, since before we showed that it's keyed, you can take your channel locks or whatever you have to hold it. There you go. Now that the nut is tightened down, we have the washer on it, everything's tight, we can come back outside and show you how we lower the jacks. Okay, so this is what it looks like under the truck after you have the spring on. Notice that we've, omit, we've omitted the strut cover and the rubber bump stop. One, because that's gonna limit your travel with the new springs, and two, because that's gonna make it more difficult to install this if you were to leave them on. Some people zip tie the strut in this position or they try to use vice grips, but it's really unnecessary. Uh, most of these trucks, since they're over 25 years old, these struts are worn out anyway. You can just pull the shaft in and out by your finger. Uh, what I was doing when we, were, when we were on the top side tightening the nut, which you couldn't see, is I was holding with one hand under here, pushing 
the strut rod up through and holding it tight. And just holding it finger tight is all that you're going to need. You don't need any zip ties or clamps to hold that on. Additionally, using the jack here is enough to compress the spring. Uh, the automotive spring compressors that are out there are too big and bulky to real fit in here and you don't really need them. Using this jack pushing on the bottom side of the hub here is more than enough to compress the, string, the spring enough to get the strut rod through the top. That's just my method of doing it. I know some other people do it differently. Uh, we are able to do this in just a couple minutes. So it seems to work fine for us. Now getting everything back together, before you put the tire on, you're gonna need to lower your second jack because the wheel is gonna go further back in here and this jack's gonna limit it. Now the second jack is lowered. We can take our wheel, put it back on. Now we showed this operating with two people. You can potentially do it with one person, but it really helps to have two people when you're trying to line up the strut rod coming through the top and having someone else to raise and lower the jack as you get it aligned. Uh, if you just a bar by yourself, you can alternate moving the jack up and down or if you can reach the jack handle and look at the same time, it's possible, but it's much faster if you have two people so one person can operate the jack while the other person is lining up the strut. All right, once the lug nuts are on, we can go and lower the first jack that was on the hub. And then finish tightening the lug nuts. As normal. Click. That's it. That's how you install the dual rate springs on a Suzuki Carry.